Hey guys, welcome back. In the last part, we have seen all the problems with the normal data fetching approach or more precisely problem without the API caching. And in this part, we are going to introduce the SWR and solve all those problems. So let's go to a terminal and install the SWR library first. Let's split the terminal. Control shift 5 is a shortcut. And then just install SWR. So npm i. Let it install. Meanwhile, let's see what SWR provides out of the box. Oh, it is already installed. Anyway, let's see what it provides. Okay, so the first one is cache the API response, no loading screen anymore. This is the main purpose of the SWR library. So it means if you have fetched the data from a particular endpoint, that data will be in the SWR cache. Let's see the next one, global level cache. It means that if you have already fetched the data in any component, you can access this from any other component in your React app. Think about this as a global store. We'll see this in practical, don't worry. Okay, let's see the next one. Update data on refocus and reconnection. It means let's say you are in this tab where your app is running. Then you visited some other tabs. So basically you lose the focus from this tab. Then after a while you come back to your app. This one. So there might be a possibility that in this interval your feed has some new post. For example every second on average around 6000 tweets are tweeted on Twitter. So in that case SWR tracks the refocus and automatically makes a new request to update the data. Very handy feature. You don't need to manually refresh this. Okay let's see the next point. Never give up mentality. Try again. Okay, so it means if for any reason the data fetching is not successful, it will try again to get the data. Unlike the traditional fetch request, it does not give up. Or like Real Madrid, it does not give up. <laughs> Let's see the next one, pagination out of the box. This one is really interesting. So you know what pagination means, right? And SWR has a special hook for this pagination. We will see the deep implementation of this. And let's see the next one, extremely customizable. There are a lot of options available you can pass inside the user SWR hook. Oh, it can also be used with the server-side rendering. We will see that. Let's see the next one. Can't type, see the docs. <laughs> Let's see the documentation. Fine. Okay, so as you can see, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of use cases. I'll put this documentation link in the description box. So please just go and read this documentation. This is one of the best documentation I've ever seen. Okay, let's go to the code editor and use the SWR hook. Fine. Make sure your JSON server is running and your local development server is running. So first of all, let's grab all the post. Let's close the terminal. Fine, just go to your home page, which is your index.tsx. Okay, so currently we are doing the traditional approach. So you can just comment out this part, the whole implementation part from this state to the use effect. Just comment out. Fine. Now at the top, just import the use SWR from SWR. It should be auto imported. Cool. So just call use SWR. Yep, look at this. It is auto imported from SWR. And now just call this hook. Here the first value should be your URL. The URL is also the key. I'll be talking about the key in a minute. So the URL is slash post. And then at the second, you need to pass the feature. Feature means the function that will get your data. It can be the Axios or normal fetch request, whatever. Let's pass a function. It will get the URL, which will be a string. And then with the arrow function, just one liner. Just get the data using the Axios. Just pass the URL inside this Axios, a normal thing. And then dot then it will get the response and just return the response. So this dot data. That's it. Save this. Our hook is ready. Now it will return a lot of things. Let's see. As we have the TypeScript, we can see what it returns. So just this structure. So control and space. Look at this. The first one is, is validating. It means the request is on. The request is not finished yet. If it is true, then the second one is muted. I'll be talking about this muted in the next part. Then revalidate. Revalidate means make a new request. But what you need is the data and the error. Okay, cool. Now just hover over the data. As you can see, the data has a type any, and that is because we have not specified the type of the data. But we can pass this inside this generic. So inside this use SWR, just pass a generic, and it is I post. I post, but it is an array, so I post array. Cool. Just save this. And now the data should have a type which is ipost array. Great. Now we have some errors. <laughs> yep. The create post just comment out for now. And then this is post. Okay, so let's just you know rename the data with the post. Cool. And now the error should be gone. Beautiful. You can also check if there is any error. You will show that hey, something went wrong. So here, just check if there is an error. Just say something like, hey, something is wrong. You no, know, with a P. Something is wrong. Let's save this. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Fine. 
okay it's getting the post and it got the post beautiful now just click on a post it's fine it's getting the post and all the comments and now just go back and look at the magic you already have the data no loading screen but does it mean that it's not making a request no it is actually making a request but meanwhile you can see the old data let's see the network tab okay go to a network tab fine just refresh actually i have a lot of extensions enabled let me just switch to a different account and look at this it's getting the data go to network look at the post request look at 3001 slash post fine and now just click on a post look at the next two requests slash post and comments and that is because these two requests let me show you again let's go to post id these two requests first one is the post slash post id and second one is the post slash post id slash comments fine and now hey oops and now just go back clear the network tab and now just go back look at this it's making a request it is it is still pending now it is 200 but you can see the loading screen you can also disable the duplicate request for a particular time but we'll see that later now let's also do this for the comments page okay let's do it just go to the comments page this post id.tsx and now let me just copy this use this tabular thing copy this go to post id you can also see the less code like it is you know four six seven seven lines of code and this is only two lines of code you can just comment out all the stuffs and now just put the SWR thing I just make this multi-line comments cool I'm keeping this for the reference nice okay so just import the SWR from the SWR library I mean use SWR from the SWR library now the URL is slash post slash post ID slash comments oh I also need to pass the created and end the order I forgot to do that beautiful the data it should be the I comment and then just rename this the data should be comments for now just comment out the post there is no error fine let's see cool okay it's making a request fine just go back it will make a request for the post cause it's the first time and then just go to post id 1 the data is already here just go back now just go to post id 2 as the post id 2 is not faced yet it will make a first request so it will show the loading and then as now this is in the cache just go back and now just again go to post id 2 look at this it's a far better user experience right and now you can use global config why why it is needed okay so basically we are repeating this feature thing this url string and this axios so you can actually define this in the global config then we do not need to write this again and again let's do it just cut this out and then just remove this comma fine and now just go to underscore app.tsx good here just wrap this component with the swr config should be auto imported from swr library yep swr config cool look at this auto import it now just wrap this component fine here you just need to pass something property value is missing yep so just pass the value an object inside this object just pass the feature and the feature is my axios thing just save this great now just go to index.tsx we don't need this feature this feature and also just correct the url it should be post slash created at with the order descending great save this beautiful now let's also grab the post inside this post id page this post thing okay how can i do that that's the important question so basically the idea is we have already faced all the posts inside this home page right so anyhow i need to get all this post and how can i get that easy just call this uses doubler hook inside this post id page now you might have a question which is hey sumit we are also making a new request inside this hook right on this post endpoint but we can remove the duplicate request we'll see that in a minute okay so i got all the post and now just rename the error with the post error okay fine now i have all the post we need to find out the particular post with the post id and how can i do that we can just run a simple function if we can extract the post index we can easily get the post so const 
post index just run a function if i have all the post with the optional chaining i just find the index inside the callback function i'll get fd post as post and then i'll match if the post dot id is same as the post id just type cast a post id to number find that's it i got the post index and now the data i can just grab the post with the post index so post just grab the particular post that's it save this and now this will be post this will be post great save this let's see okay refresh the page fine i have my post with the post id 2 just go back great just clear the network request and now just go to post id 68 look at this there is no loading screen for the post and that is because we are getting the post from the cache but 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 there is a problem the problem i was talking about look at this let's refresh the page let's start from the scratch okay okay the first request is on the post endpoint and now just go to post id 68 you can see a new request on this post endpoint look at this this post endpoint a new request but this is kind of the excessive request right we don't want that so you can pass an option which is called deduping let's see so for this request this second post request inside this post id page after this key just pass an object here you can pass some options so just press control and space and look at this you have all these options this we are interested on this deduping interval okay here you can pass the numbers in milliseconds so for example let's say 10,000 it means 10 seconds what does it mean it means that if our app gets a duplicate request inside this 10 second it will not make that request let's see just save this and now just go to the page okay first request is on our post endpoint now just quickly go to post id 68 and you can see the post endpoint request look at this we have only one request but let's say you now let's wait for the 10 second I hope the 10 second is passed and now just go to post id 4483 and look at this it's making a request to post endpoint now let's see what is the case of key so i told you that the first value is also the endpoint and also the key so the importance of the key is it will check inside the cache that if the key does exist or not let me show you a difference so inside our home page which is slash post and the query parameter is sort and the order and now inside this post id page this is again the same request but we are going to modify the url this is slash post slash okay so this is the same endpoint right but the key is different so this deduping interval will not work let's say just save this and now just go to the home page so fine now just quickly go to the post id 68 look at this look at this is making a new request you can see the endpoint which is slash post slash query parameter sort and order fine so that's the importance of the key make sure you have the same url throughout your app just save this fine now you can obviously also pass all these options like this deduping interval inside your global configuration yeah here you, here you can pass this after this feature you put a comma and press control and space look at this you have the deduping interval you can pass this and then you can just override this for each request right so the 10,000 is the default not default but which is in our global configuration so we can obviously override this for example 100 seconds let's try to make this smaller for a social media app 12,000 great now let me show you the never give up mentality okay just go to the page refresh and now just close the server just go to mm -hmm -hmm. yep this json server just kill this server and then just refresh the page look at this pending 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 failed 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 but it's still making a new request this post sort failed then the new request to comments it just never gives up you can just run the server now and it will load the data it will also load the data because it will make a new request on refocus look at this you got the data SWR technology is one of the best things you will learn. Fine. Now let me show you how it works on refocus. 
So basically the idea is <laughs> just go to a create post. Uh, oh, the create post is visible, right? Not a problem. So you can just create the post manually. <laughs> okay, now we don't have any post. Just go to the JSON server. Not JSON server, but the db.json. Just duplicate a post. Fine. The new post is new, new post. New, new, new post. So much creativity. The post ID is 70. Just save this. Our oh, created ad should be greater. So 28. Just save this. And now just go to underscore app.tsx here inside this option object just pass a value which is revalidate on focus which is true which is also true by default and anyway, you just save this and now just go to your app you should immediately see your new new post uh, it will make a new request and look at this new new post so this is also same for the reconnection so if you lost the connection the internet connection when the internet connection is back it will make a new request to update the data Okay, so that's it for this part. In the next part, we are going to see how mutate works and we can actually create a post and create a comment with the mutate. Okay, so see you in the next part. Bye.